Hello? <laughs> Hi, and uh, welcome back to the Art Tech Seminar here at Assembly. And we'll continue with the topic of virtual reality from a different kind of edge this time. Um, please welcome Ville Lapisponen from Evacrity. Thank you, wonderful lady. Can you hear me? Oh. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ville Pispanen, and my approach to virtual reality might just be a bit different from what we've seen earlier today. So, we will uh, enter into the subject of virtual reality combined with physical exercise. Introduction is something that I've learned to do quite broadly during my military career. You can know what I've done before, who I am, what my goals are, what my project goals are, if I don't open anything about myself. So, adult life, I spent five years roughly in the ranks of Finnish Defence Forces, and uh, during that time I was also a competitive fighter. I started with wrestling at the age of five, and I continued with mixed martial arts. If someone knows UFC, basically the same thing, but I never went pro, and I never really wanted to go pro. But uh, both sports and uh, military stuff and shooting, firearms, they've already been, always been quite a fundamental part of my life. 30 years of age nowadays, and Evocative VR is my project currently. I'm the only one employed full-time, and uh, yes, the bulk of Evacrity revolves around creating VR content and streaming VR games, mostly. My hobbies, yes, as mentioned, combat sports, hunting firearms, but I also study nutrition and dietetics, which is a fundamental part of doing sports, your diet, and before the things we see in the pictures, I was a gamer, and I've always been one. I quit gaming when I left home at the age of 19, but here we are. Basically, I'm a professional gamer now. Introduction to Evacrity. To be honest, my lifelong dream since the first Doom that came out in 1993, and I saw it for the first time when I was seven in 1994. Since that day, I've been willing to go inside the game. As deep as I can get in there, I want to feel it, I want to see it. Really how it is when, you, when you're in the game. I got the initial idea for my project in 2014. Uh, I was in pre-deployment pre training. I was going overseas to a military operation and uh, I saw it in a dream that I was doing military stuff in VR and the next two, three weeks I, w I was obsessed in the worst possible way. I wanted to know if that's possible, if that's something you can actually do for a living. And uh, the living part is still a question, but you can do it, yes, that's, that's for sure right now. I started in 2014, uh, 2017, pardon. Um, I had to wait for a long time just to get my hands on the technology, the equipment that I wanted to combine to do this. So, yeah, almost three years. Initially, I thought it would be possible in 2015, somewhere, quarter three, quarter four, possibly, when I had returned home from the operation, but no, 2017 was the initial starting point. Main goals, as seen here, to promote more physically demanding and realistic approach to competitive gaming. Gaming mostly means sitting, not moving anything else but your hands. And of course, you're doing a lot, but you're not physically doing that much. So, why not walk, run, jump, whatever. I think the future of competitive gaming is there, but we're yet to see how things go. I hope that will be the direction we will be moving in or moving towards. And I want to drive the use of virtual reality forward in both military and private security training. Because it suits both fields very well, but is very, very underutilized currently. 
Secondary goal, finding more effective ways to train with VR, suitable measures, what to add, both software and hardware and all kinds of solutions out of either field. All the content we create are created in our home studio and HTC Vive is the primary component usually present in all the content. My affi affiliations on top of, of course, my own project as a person contain the Finnish VR Association and the VR Fitness Insider, which is a pu publication in the United States focusing on VR fitness, but yes, it's a subgenre of a subgenre still. Hopefully times are changing. What is it that we do and what does Evacrity sell is something that is frequently asked from me. Frequently, all the time. Have you invented the setup you use? What, what have you done? I'm combining things that I've gotten from both software and hardware side from, from others. I haven't invented anything on my own. The approach is the key. I guess I'm just the one who's crazy enough to try and turn this into a profession or create the field. Currently, I feel I'm somewhat successful. There are no others. I, I think I would only benefit from competition because this thing would actually exist and I could challenge someone. Face me. As an individual, roles, role in the field. Someone needs to lead the way to show what can be done. The dream comes first, and if it's up to me, if I will always be in control of the project that I currently am, this will never change. The dream comes first, period. And the VR arcade scene is growing. VR arcades are popping up all around the world, including Finland. Someone needs to be a professional in the field. Someone needs to invent the new tricks how to do it. Like tennis. Tennis courts all over the place. If you want to, you can play tennis in every, every city, every town, but still there are professionals. The best people doing that. The ones who you would look up to, try to learn what they do. Ain't that right? And yes, my main focus in competitive VR gaming in the future, it doesn't really exist yet. There are some tournaments, but nothing that has really Appeal to me, to be honest. First-person shooters, no-brainer, and fighting games, both melee and unarmed. Because, yes, I have the suitable background. All right, let's hop into the physical exercise part. And start with the first field that I wanted to conquer when I started with the project. This was the most important one for me. And for VR, from this point of view, I would say, so aerobic conditioning, meaning easy cardiovascular training, usually at a pace that you can continue on for very, very long periods of time or for unlimited time, basically. You're going easy, but you're burning fat and you're making your endurance, your stamina better at the same time. The health benefits as seen there, Simple, but important. Typical training methods for aerobic conditioning in general would contain running and swimming. And for VR, how do we get there? How do we get that effect on our bodies? The solution I use and the solution that is most widely adopted are omnidirectional treadmills. And on top of that, I use heart rate monitor to always be able to follow how I'm doing, how my body is responding to the activities. And in the picture, I'm there in, in full combat gear. That is very fundamental part of what I do. Quite often when I'm streaming, if, if it has anything to do with military or firearms, that's usually the equipment that I'm using. I want to add to the exercise or the workout, the Armor plates that I'm carrying weigh a lot, so I'm pushing myself harder on top of just walking or running in the game. And the piece of equipment, the device that I'm using is from UK called the uh, Rubber One from Witch Dish Limited. 
very simple omnidirectional treadmill, but it, it works. That's the most important part, of course. Many have heard of these. Many who are interested in VR technology have heard of omnidirectional treadmills, but still it's rare to have seen one. Next, I'm going to show a video from April this year from Doom Tree BFG Edition VR mod from ID Software. I'm utilizing the uh, treadmill here, the combat gear here, and uh, also my heart rate is monitored. Pay attention to the heart rate monitor if you're interested in how to utilize it. I've been going on for almost eight hours here. This is from a live stream. Right. Um, key takes from there, an eight-hour session, basically. I ran through the whole game in, uh, I would say, 17 hours, including breaks, every single step with my own feet. And why I chose Doom as the first game was because the whole thing was sparked by Doom, the original one in 1994. I look a bit clumsy. Yes, it's not as easy as walking with your own feet on solid ground. But yes, it's also working my balance and secondary, other secondary physical attributes. So, and yeah, I got my, I got my dream come true. I'm really inside the game. It's easy to forget everything that's happening around you because I simply need to pay so much attention to what's happening in the gameplay. Next one, strength training. Key take from strength training column is the use of resistance. We work against resistance to build muscle, to get stronger, to build bone mass, whatever, size of skeletal muscles, as the definition says. This one is quite hard to achieve with VR, so it took me a long time to find a solution here. Primary training accessories are listed for VR, a resistance suit, seen in the picture, produced by Juke Performance Incorporated, called the Mass Suit. I cannot change gravity. That's impossible for me. It would be the perfect solution to make the gaming session harder for me. I would be working against resistance, but that's not possible. This is the next best thing. As you can see from the picture, cables are attached to my legs and arms from my torso, basically. Everything that I physically do I need to fight against the resistance cables and yes, basically, simply put, I'm training strength while I'm gaming. I think that's pretty awesome, to be honest. Wish I invented that, but I didn't. But I can utilize it. And yes, weighted clothing can always be added to the uh, mix if you feel like doing it, but usually that's quite much enough if you want to push yourself. So resistance suit and what it suits best are mostly fighting games, especially fighting games, including swords, mazes, other cold weapons. You will have to work with your full body. You will have to 
dodge and you will have to swing and all that. I will show an example video next. The game is Tales of Glory from Blacktail Games. And hopefully you can tell that I've upgraded my studio. Where the fuck is my two-hander now? I lost one of my weapons, and I need to get another one. Get it, get it, get it! Destroy! Right. Um, the heart rate monitor, it's, uh, it's a neutral judge. We can tell that my body is working. I'm at 115 beats per minute. So in the aerobic heart rate zone currently, I'm working, but not too hard. But the focus with the suit is always in uh, strength training. I'm going against the resistance. I'm not moving that much around, but still I'm doing work. 426 kilocalories burned so far. And we move on to the third field. When I had these two, I did it first in the world, so I moved on to the next. Motor learning or muscle memory. Consolidating a specific motor task into memory through repetition. Something that really cannot be taught in any other way but by doing. Typical training methods, kinesthetic learning as in hands-on approach, basically. And, of course, numerous benefits, but the key ones, motor and memory systems, improved coordination of body movements. And, yes, so many methods in VR, this is something that is developed in many fields, much better adoption, much wider adoption than when it comes to physical training applications so far. And what we use here is a custom 3D printed gun stock for HTC Vive, labeled the Nightmare and uh, produced, plan uh, designed and uh, printed by Finnish 3D printer manufacturer, Mini Factory LTD. And I will show a few pictures more and tell about the process of creating this thing. We started from here, or at this point, maybe 15 hours behind or 15 hours used in the project. I really didn't know what I want, so I went with maximum realism. I wanted the gun stock to look as much rear rifle as possible and we used uh, an American sports carbine rifle as the platform called LVOA Model C from War Sports Industries because I thought it is the best possible design 
it's pretty simple because I will not be able to see it with the head mounted display on. So there's not that many corners or stuff that I will get stuck into. And uh, if you have failures or corrections, not failures, we had to make corrections, that's a better way to put it. We're required on the top left, we can see the uh, parts, bulk of the parts in the printer, the manufacturer innovator. Top right, the kit that I started with, started putting the thing together. When it was assem assembled, I noticed that, okay, unusable, uh, the HMD is on the way, or the gun is in the way of the HMD, whichever way you want to put it, but still unusable, I can use it like this. So on the bottom right corner, you can see that the buttstock or the tube leading to the buttstock has been redesigned from metal so that it's adjustable height-wise. And also, I'm in the middle of doing the paint job with spray paints because I wanted, I, I wanted it to look like a sports car, basically. Completely custom. And in the middle, it's fresh out of the process. And I was very, very satisfied. And actually, I have it here with me. So, it's mostly plastic, not a real firearm. You can't be too sure in this country anymore. What brings the design so close to real life is that it accepts parts, pieces and components from real firearms, including hand grip bipod seen here. And four minutes later, four minutes after I published first picture of this, um, three people wanted to buy it or wanted their own. But yes, like 160 hours of work total because I had no previous experience, but I wanted, I wanted it. So I made one. And as far as functional motor skills go, I love it because I'm, I'm used to rifles. I'm, I'm used to firearms. So yes, I get closer to realism, but also my motor functions work better. I've done certain patterns 10,000, 15,000 times when it comes to changing magazines, cocking rifles, whatever. I'm so used to the kind of actions that using just the controllers doesn't feel good. It puts me off. I will not perform at the level I want to. And also the ability to use a sling when I'm streaming, when I'm making a video, whatever leaves my hands free. So, yes, realism. Again, I will show a short video. The first test with the gun stock. I was very, very satisfied at the time. It took so long to finish it. And the game we will be using here or seeing is Onward from Downpour Interactive.
all right, you get the idea from here. What's revolutionary in a way as far as the gun stock goes? For me, like I said, I'm just used to certain motoric functions, certain actions to be carried out in a certain way. So as far as competitive gaming goes, if there will be such for VR, which is close to real life in a way, including military stuff, basically. Um, gun stocks, other accessories that are already familiar bring guys like me pretty much a very solid edge. Like, it's, I've, I've already used something like that so much, so I feel like home, basically. That is probably the biggest thing. And yes, as far as the military market goes for VR, this is something that really raised some uh, interest towards the project that I, I'm running and trying to make better. As far as the training methods go, as we, if we stick to cardiovascular conditioning or, or uh, airway conditioning, like I wrote it here, and strength training and moderate function training, the exercise benefits are mostly passive. I don't need to pay any attention as far as I'm just doing stuff with omnidirectional treadmill, resistant suit, weighted clothing, or using the certain devices that are possible to add to VR or utilize in VR. You don't need to leave your home, of course, and yeah, can be made harder, can be made easier. And secondary physical attributes on top of stamina, strength, motoric functions. Also, you will be working your balance, your coordination, all in all, and so forth, depending on what we're doing. And of course, we're having fun, and that's the biggest part. Active VR training, as I separate these two fields, if the previous ones were passive, active VR training, how I look at it, and how I've, well, basically labeled it myself. Uh, if we combine other exercise training, whatever methods with VR, a physical type of VR, that's what I consider an active method. We need to stop doing something to do the exercise thing, but it can be added there into the mix. I've used kettlebells, resistance bands, boxing gloves, sandbags, boxing bags, to name like the analog approach to the whole thing. Of course, vibe trackers, whatever, but these are elements that no one else seems to be paying attention to. That's, that's the key here. I will show a short video. Um, I did a stream or a video where I'm playing Starbreeze Studios, John Wick VR, John Wick Chronicles VR, and I'm combining it into a circuit training session. I'm, I'm playing the game for four minutes and then I'm doing a four minute um, circuit, a heavy one. And uh, the story can be read from the heart rate monitor. I've cut out the gaming parts and uh, just the two, two exercise rounds in short are shown here. Starting to be a bit tired here. Let's move on to the third one. Peak heart rate, um, 182 or 183 in the circuit. That's can be considered super heavy. But if I would try to reach that with only VR, options available would be very, very, very hard. So I'm mixing in conventional training to reach my goal, to be more fit, to be stronger, to be faster. Let's talk about eSports and possible vSports or VR sports, whatever it will be called eventually. What would change? 
okay, the gamer scene, arguably, not necessarily, but I would say more fit and healthier, probably better role models for the youth, probably, who knows, maybe it will spark someone to do sports out of VR, hopefully so, because as far as the competitive scene would go, you would be required to train conventionally to you, you cannot do everything in VR yet. Sponsorship opportunities, gamers events, in general wider adoption, larger appeal to the general public. And the negative side, the technical setups. They are definitely more challenging. Still doable, but more challenging. It would require a certain amount of effort to uh, build whatever the concept would be. Five against five, three against three, one against one, whatever. But nothing impossible. I think only thing needed is suitable content, of course, competitors, but money and exposure. We'll see. We'll see. The future, as I see it going, for competitive VR gaming. Impossible to say what kind of form it would take. Will the approach be like I would want it to be? As realistic as possible, as heavy as the real life thing would be, as far as shooters go. I would like that, but it remains to be seen how it manifests in the end. But wider recognition, three to five years at least. That's sad, but I think that's where we're at now. And the first generation, the background would really count very, very, very much at this point. You need to have played games, you need to have done sports in your previous life, depending on the game, of course. But it comes to down to tactical skills, intelligence, reactions versus raw physical attributes, when put simply. If someone is just that much more enduring, is just that much more fit, Will he be the king through the fitness or someone just tr through sheer skill? Is it possible? Most likely you will need to be a combination of both with background in both, I would say, as far as the first generation goes. Second generation gamers would quickly overrun the first generation. They would be young when the thing comes out. That would be their goal. They will start practicing, they will start training, they want to achieve a certain level, they want to get there, win the tournaments, make, make it to the best teams and become professionals. Coaching, training methods, that will fall to the first generation. Someone like me, probably. I might be too old when the competitive VR gaming scene comes out. At 30, I'm not getting any younger. Very few of us will, but uh, the coaching, the training, everything is always there if it takes flight. Who would know better than the one who's already pushing the boundaries from the start? Who would know better? Challenges currently when it comes to using VR for training purposes, physical training purposes. The shortage of specific content. There isn't too much stuff to do out there. There are games, there are simulations, but mixing the physical training aspect isn't the easiest thing in the world. You need to tinker and tamper, set up a lot of stuff, find the solutions, they are not there yet. The games tend to be short and fairly expensive, linked to the first one. And yes, VR fitness, a subgenre of a subgenre. Not even really recognized yet, at least widely. The possibilities, the opportunities are seen and partially recognized, but someone needs to push it. Someone needs to push it to certain directions. Many, many, many people are doing it in different fields. My field is this. And when going to advanced levels, and what I mean here is, well, don't really like that much to talk about myself, but I'm already at that level that the basic stuff really doesn't push me possibly at all. 
So how to make it harder? How to go to the next level? What do I need to make it so much tougher, so much more challenging for myself? The future. Yes, the recognition, the exposure, and through that, the money, the big players. We'll see how it goes. Impossible to say at this point, but I believe the next five years will bring steady growth, not a boom in the VR fitness field or physical training field. Quite many sources think that it will just explode. I disagree. I completely disagree with that. I think it will go step by step by step by step, reaching certain level and maybe then it'll accelerate, but it's still so far away. And I'm afraid most specialists will be aiming their expertise for professional athletes at first. They already have the physical aspect, so VR will have some of that, but mostly focusing on psychological coaching and uh, mindset training, stuff like that. It's very much suitable for that too. But I would want to see it the other way around, to go with the other way around, I mean, so that the average Joe could find his way to use VR for physical training. There's a link, or actually two links, that I will be showing to my understanding. Yes, I have a few minutes of time. Yes, VR Fitness Insider. I'm a contributing writer in here. That is not the main thing, but the VR athlete, it's a term that doesn't really exist. But by this magazine, I was named that, and I guess that's what I represent currently. Not sure will that be the actual term. There isn't that much terminology yet in this field, but sounds good to me. It explains what I do, doesn't it? And future fitness labs. This was very, very, very good news for the field, I would say. An event in Sweden, December this year, is actually dedicating an event or a part of an event to VR fitness applications in the field, solutions in the field, whatever, I don't know. There might be many, many, many ways to do this in general that I've never seen or heard before. Who knows how many projects are going on right now underground? No idea. Hopefully many. Hopefully useful and hopefully in everyone's reach. But this is really good news. Just a couple of days ago when this came out. So I wanted to add it in here. All right. Now we're talking. This more or less concludes my turn here in Arctic 2017. Hopefully I was able to give you a picture what fitness or training applications with VR can be, what kind of solutions can be utilized out of the box or in general. Hopefully some of you got interest towards the field. It will be present in the future in one form or another and I will think in many forms, but we will see how it goes. Thank you for the opportunity to speak here. Thank you for all the wonderful developers providing me with content designed for my use. That's, that's fascinating, very, very inspiring. Thank you, Sami. We have one example here, the previous speaker, Sami Heinonen, one of the developers that believe in my ability to drive this thing forward. So I'm provided with content that I can use and I only need to figure out how to get the training aspect into it because I don't understand anything about coding or developing software, nothing. 
Any questions? So uh, you talk about like uh, physical aspect and um, endurance. So how do you see that uh, fatigue is like affecting cognitive skills if you think like applications such as milita military training? So how do you see that um, this kind of setup or is it being already used to, uh, for example, train soldiers like cognitive skills and decision making under the fatigue and stress? Um, as far as military training goes right now or in the current state, they're pretty much secrets all in all if we go there. But if you're a soldier, you will need to be able to make decisions and act under fatigue. So I think combining those two at least um, is a very, very useful way to utilize it. Can I have a shorter version, just a little bit shorter version? Like what was the core of the question? How do you see that, uh, for example, cognitive training in, in a, like a, those kind of with, like for example, security applications? How do you see that when it will come? Tough one, tough one. Um, widespread use in 2022. That's what I would say. You know, like any, or ha have you come up with any research on on those um, secrets? Pretty much, I can say that um, I'm in talks with a couple of parties operating in that field already. So, at least it's been thought of, but impossible to say when it will take place and uh, which which countries, which units. I would say. Um, special police units will be the first one adopting VR in widespread use. That would be my educated quest. Did I uh, answer your question? Okay, next one. Um, uh, I was just wondering, you were using the HTC Vive for uh, these aer aerobic exercises. Uh, have you had any issues with managing sweat? Um, no, not really. I was quite surprised how well um, I'm able to perform or use the HTC Vive, although I'm sweating quite a lot. Of course, I take breaks every now and then. If no nothing else forces me to take a break, I will need to eat because I'm really burning so much calories. And usually the viewers of the stream will want to talk to me every now and then, but no problems with the sweat, not at all. I'm using the, um, the uh, stock version of the protective cover. What does the VR that the glass add in the fitness training? How, how, how are we using the, the, that ball or, or something like that? Um, again, please. What, what, what the VR add in the fitness, in your fitness training? Mine or general? Oh, general. Well, I would say uh, it provides an easy entry to getting yourself into better fitness, better condition. So easy to just uh, take it into use. Um, it's a trend that I've seen among my friends who visited me, like I was talking about the project for a long time, but it doesn't really, before you see anything concrete, you don't really understand what it is about if I just tell and tell and tell stuff. They came and saw what I did. They bought their own vibe and I asked, what's the primary reason for that? Uh, in every single case, the answer was, it's so easy to, to just get yourself moving with this. The passive effect, I think that's the biggest thing. Any more? Uh, uh, another practical question regarding the vibe. Um, there's a lot of moving around. Uh, uh, does, does the headset um, stay on your head while you're moving around? Like, how, how, how are there any restrictions on that? Um, I wish I had a picture of my setup. Um, I have two dog leashes in the ceiling, two separate dog leashes, the flexi kind, uh, one controlling the bulk of the cable and the second one controlling the cable closer to the HMD. 
And uh, <laughs> it took me like three weeks to find the best possible solution. And uh, it doesn't really play that large of a role. The biggest thing is that I can make a larger area because the cables are too short currently. Of course, I will switch to wireless when possible, but uh, the cables are, are not a problem. I will provide uh, a picture somewhere some uh, sometime from my double flex doggly setup. There's no ready solution. I just spent like two weeks researching that what can I put in the ceiling so that the cable doesn't come in my way so that I don't hit it down. Well, it has happened a couple of times, but I think only two or three. That's not much. So most, most of the damage averted. More. Okay, if there's um, no more questions, thank you, Ville. Thank you. Joo, vieläkö täältä tulee 